Welcome to the Pharma Voice Editor's Take video series, recorded live at the DIA 2014 Annual Meeting in San Diego, hosted by Taryn Grom, Editor of Pharma Voice. In this episode, Taryn meets with Thomas Wardle, MS, MBA, Global Head of Operations, Worldwide Clinical Trials. Tom, welcome to the 50th anniversary of the DIA. Glad. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me to share a few minutes with you about cardiovascular outcomes. We're excited to have you. Mm-hmm. Tom, the prevalence of cardiovascular disease is rising. What does this mean in terms of adequately predicting risk and identifying its determinants in terms of outcomes? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, well, first, in terms of predicting risk, that's the key um, discussion point here, is uh, you need to have a good understanding of what inherent risk is and what modified risk is. When we talk about inherent risk, we're talking about age and family history, things that are not modifiable. We talk about modified risk factors, we're talking about things that can be modified by a doctor, uh, by the patient, such as their lifestyle changes, their diet, medications they take, and uh, in many instances it can be biological variables as well, such as, uh, as well, such as um, a cholesterol, for example, is a biological marker that is used often in certain types of cardiovascular outcome studies. Uh, second, I would say you have to develop algorithms which are uh, helpful in stratifying the risk um, uh, in, in how you set up and design cardiovascular outcome studies. Um, stratifying the risk has to be done at an individual patient level to a large extent. And again, you're quantifying and trying to understand and differentiating the inherent risk versus the modifiable risks and stratifying those. This has to be done from the perspective of the the clinicians and the payers. You have to take their position in terms of um, what uh, the design of a trial like that will look like and make sure that their perspective is uh, is carefully considered when you design a trial um, uh, such as a cardiovascular outcome study. You also have to carefully anticipate the impact on the disease in a new intervention. And the standards of care, which we'll talk about, uh, which I can talk about later, are, are very important in playing into how a, a trial like this is designed as well. Third, I think uh, you need very sophisticated medical and epidemiological support in a trial like this, both at the front end and helping design the trial. Um, the statistical analyses that will go into it at the back end are also very critical too in terms of how you Uh, interpret the information that you collect in a large outcomes trial. Fantastic. Tom, what are some of the challenges and then solutions for data collection to address cardiovascular outcomes? Okay. Uh, When it comes to data collection, I would break it down into probably two primary uh, components. It's the input side and the output side. On the input side, um, we're talking probably about three areas here. Um, Information that's collected from the physician, information that's collected from the patient, and information that can be collected from, let's say, a specialized laboratory analysis. All of these have to be very carefully integrated throughout the study and especially at the study end to make sure that um, that information can be consolidated into a database that's actually evaluable uh, by those who are interested in that particular outcome. On the output side, what we're primarily talking about here is the use of clinical endpoint adjudication and the role that a, a, an adjudication committee and the therapeutic experts will play in, um, in helping evaluate the endpoints for a particular study. Um, the outcomes have to be uh, very unambiguous, uh, and they generally are. For example, in, in most cardiovascular outcome studies, the clinical outcome can be, for example, a myocardial infarction or a stroke, and those are easily understood, easily reported, the type of information that you collect um, is uh, relatively easy to collect. And it doesn't, doesn't necessarily require um, an adjudication committee, a medical expert, to manage that information. In other words, it can be done algorithmically to a large extent. However, and this is a critical point, the, there, there can be a shift in the number of endpoints that you see by stratified groups and minor shifts can have a huge impact on the outcome of a study. And that's why it's important that you have qualified adjudication committees who use both uh, an algorithmic algorithmic model as well as um, the clinical evaluation of the data that's collected in the adjudication process. Um, uh, It's also critical that the centers that you pick are very representative in the types of studies that uh, 
are typical of cardiovascular outcome studies. And then the last point I would make here is that you have to be very careful with the um, management of dropouts, uh, early terminations and dropouts. And usually in these studies you want to try and keep that, that dropout rate extremely low. And so it's critical that you have uh, methods and policies and procedures and how you run that trial to make sure that you don't lose patients in the follow-up process or throughout the course of the trial. And the reason for that primarily is because you have to deal with every patient that comes into the trial and uh, the adjudication committees have to be very conservative um, in terms of how they treat loss to follow-up or dropout patients. And so it's critical that you have very low dropout rates in these types of studies as well. Finally, Tom, because cardiovascular studies enroll thousands of patients across the world and have outcomes that, could, that can affect standards of care, what burden does this place on trial design and outcome measures? Mm -hmm. Well, um, when it comes to standards of care, first you have to learn how to accommodate the variations that occur in different countries rather than to try and eliminate them. Um, and, and I think that's a, a, a key theme, is uh, accommodation of, um, of the standards of care helps you to um, adaptively modify randomization, for example. Um, and so the, the idea here is to understand uh, the standards of care in each country and then to be able to accommodate them rather than to eliminate them. Um, country selection has to be very carefully considered to meet the most important inclusion-exclusion criteria but not necessarily all of the inclusion exclusion criteria. So when you go about selecting countries in, in, a, in a large cardiovascular outcomes trial, your goal is not to try and eliminate every country that might have you know, significant variation, but to figure out how to accommodate it statistically uh, to address the main inclusion exclusion uh, criteria. Um, the second thing you need to understand is the prevalence of the risk factors in each country. Uh, diabetes, obesity, things like that. You have to have a really good understanding of the epidemiological impact within that particular country of those um, and the prevalence of those risk factors. Third, I would say is you have to be very careful about the proportion of the patients that are enrolled in each country. Uh, there was a study that was run in 2003 evaluating an antiarrhythmic where 90% of the data, as an example, came from the Ukraine. Um, in today's environment, it would be unlikely that um, that, that drug would be approved if 90% of the data comes from one country. Even if it is approved, it would be difficult to get it on formularies. If it did get on formularies, it would potentially be difficult uh, to get the type of reimbursement that would actually change um, physician and practice behavior in those, addition, in those, in those countries. Um, last, I would say, um, you have to really design a trial that has the ability to actually influence uh, the behavior of physicians in each particular country. You might be able to run the most elegant uh, trial, uh, have very significant results um, that meet the, um, the, the purposes of what that trial was, but at the end of the day, if you can't influence the behavior of the physicians within that country, then the most elegant study in the world isn't going to help you. Thank you very much for sharing those very important insights with us. And thank you for participating in our Editor's Take video program. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. Additional Editor's Take videos, as well as podcasts, white papers, webinars, and more, are available at www.pharmavoice.com.